Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a recipe in Brewfather. I could have done this video in five to 10 minutes. I could have rushed it through, but I've decided it's better to do it this way. We're going to be going through step by step. I'm going to give you a couple of tips along the way and show you how to adapt recipes from your favorite book. Okay, here we go. So if you go recipes here on the left, you can either press plus up here. Well, there's a cool little toggle down there. Add recipe, fresh new page comes up. First thing you want to do then is name that recipe. What we're going to be doing today, this is one of my favorite books and we're going to be adapting the recipe and I'm going to show you how I do it. The book we're using today is the Andy Parker's Home Brewing book. As I'm using the recipe from that book, I think it's only fair that I put a link below and recommend you go check this book out. There are a number of really good recipes uh, in this book and they're all craft beer recipes as well from the UK. Today we're going to go to page number 158. This is a recipe from Pressure Drop Brewing, uh, which is a UK brewery, but we're going to be doing an American Pale Ale, which they've named Pale Fire. Author is set up default. It would be itself, but as we're doing a clone recipe, it's only right that they're naming. We can't really take the credit for this. Then you select the type. Today we're going to be doing an all grain. You can also do your partial zine extract. I've got my equipment profile set up. For the sake of the video though, we're going to be going with the Grainfather default equipment profile. We're going to have a 60 minute boil. If you wanted to do a 40 minute boil, that's all you do. You can toggle that. Today we're going to do a 60 minute. And again, you can toggle with everything here, but we're going to be doing a 23 litre batch. I'm not going to go through this and show you boil off rates, mash ton, dead space. This is something that you just figure out. If you take notes on brew day one, two, three, you're going to figure all this stuff out as you go along. One thing you really want to pay attention to though is your brew house efficiency. The default in, in, in brew father for the grain father is 72%, which is pretty much spot on. Um, I'll show you here. We go to batches if i go yorkshire bitter completed scroll down as you can see my brew house efficiency on this particular recipe 73 percent so we're near enough mash efficiency was 74 percent which is quite low it's new it's usually higher than that so i'm not sure what happened that day um but you know these things are never never the same are they so 72 is a really good ballpark Next thing you want to do is select your style. This is an American Pale Ale. If I type pale, it should come up. Here we go, top one. BJCP, American Pale Ale, 18B. So this is really good. If you're doing a homebrew competition, you now know that you need to aim ABB somewhere in the region of 4.5 to 6.2%. You want your OG somewhere between 1045, 1060 your FG, EBC, IBU, and your bitterness ratio. When you're creating your own recipe, you can see the little line will pop up here and you want to get somewhere in the green. If you're doing a, this is really good if you're doing a, uh, entering your beer for a homebrew competition. So the first thing we want to do then is add in the fermentables. Now you're going to, you're going to see here, as I add in the fermentables, this little cup here, it's going to change color and I'll show you that in a minute. But as you, you can watch as I type and you'll see the change color. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get some Maris Otter and we're going to put 2.4 kg. There you go. Look, it's nice and orange. And then the next thing we're going to do is get some Pilsner malt. You're going to see that I actually don't have any Pilsner malt in stock. I didn't have any Maris Otter either. What I do have is Golden Promise. And you can see here I've got 25 kg of golden promise so I could have used that um, which is really good in the future when you're creating your recipes you can see what you've actually got in stock but for the sake of this video and sake of this recipe we're just gonna go with Pilsner malt 1.2 and then we're gonna add some flaked wheat and you can see here, you can either enter the kgs or the grams. So here we've got 200 grams. And then lastly, we've got 
Sweet. Oh. Let's just go with that one there. Okay, so now you can see we've got our fermentables. You may have noticed we're only at 4.1% up here, which isn't within the zone. When you look at the book, their recipe is actually 4.8%. And then if you look down here, the original gravity is 1039. So what's gone wrong there? Well, you may have noticed this is a 23 litre batch. The recipes in this book are all for 20 litres. So the way to fix this, if you go to OG and you just type in the original gravity from the book, which is 1045, press the scale button, and there you go. We've now got 1045 original gravity, 4.7%. And if I take a screenshot, we'll come back to that in a minute. This is, this is the reason why I picked this book. And I just wanted to show you when people are talking about percentages, so someone might say, yeah, here's a recipe. If you add about 90% Marisotta, give it 5% Carapils, maybe 5% Flate. In your head, you're trying to calculate that and it's a pain. This is another way of doing it. So if we take the kgs here, it's actually got percentages in this book. There's a reason why I've picked this book. Um, we've got 60%. Marisotta. We then have 30% Pilsner. We have 5% Flate Wheat and 5% Wheat Malt. So yeah, it looks absolutely... I have gone wrong here. That should be 60. So yeah, it looks absolutely ridiculous. We've got 100 kg, but then if you look at the percentages, we're spot on. We've got 60, 30, 5 and 5. Obviously, the original gravity here is ridiculous. All you do then to fix that, press that OG button, 1045, press the scale button. And if we go back to that snip in, go back to the snip, whatever you call it, the screenshot, you'll see there that we've got exactly the same so there's two ways of entering your recipes in. As you can see, we're nice and orange. Just to show you then, if we added something like Carafit 3, if we went a bit crazy and put a whole kilo of that in there, it's going to turn black. So that's really cool. Just so you can see what colour your beer is going to look like. Now we go to the hops. First of all, we put in Magnum. And we want to put... 60 minute edition, 10 grams of magnum. If you wanted to do a first wort hop, that's all you do. But we're going to do a 60 minute boil for bittering. Next up, we're going to do some Amarillo. You can see I have 500 grams of 2017 harvest Amarillo, which I really need to use up. Um, and I've also got a 2018 harvest, another 500 grams, so I really need to get that Amarillo used up. Um, and you'll notice that the alpha acids are different. 9.6% was in 2017. In 2018 harvest, they've, we've got 8.1%. Now, this is really useful to do your own custom. You'll see there, that one there is the default one. So you could put in the default one and just change it here to whatever, when you buy your homebrew hop, uh, hops, it might only be 8.5 and you could do it that way. Alternatively, if you like playing with the inventory, which I do, you go to the hops here and you search for Amarillo. And there you see that that one there is the default. Here's what I like to do is you press copy. Again, you type in Amarillo and you'll see there it's cloned that one. So what you could do then is Change the harvest to 2020. Uh, it might have been 9.5 this year. I've now got another uh, 500 grams of those. And that cost me whatever it costs. You put the cost per gram in there. And you press save. And then when you go back to your recipes, you'll have your hops that you've actually bought. And I like to put notes. So as you notice, the other ones I've bought from Timmy. 
Um, you can put Malt Miller, whoever, whatever you bought, wherever you bought them from. If you've already opened the packet already, you can put notes in here. It's pretty cool. Next up, we've got Amarillo. Uh, this is going to be the hop stand. We've got 20 grams, 20 minutes, and you can even adjust the temp temperature, 80 C. So if you don't know what that means, um, in a lot of recipe books, like this one, for example, they put zero minutes. But what a lot of us home brewers like to do is to reduce the bitterness. If you lower the temp down, for example, I've got here 80 C. You can do that for 20 minutes. And then your IBUs is, for that particular edition is only going to be 3.1. Just, just for an example, if we actually did that at 90 degrees, the bitterness is higher. So this is how you reduce your bitterness in, a, in, a, in a, this type of hoppy beers. You can do 70, bring that bitterness right down to 1.4. So we're going to stick around 80 because that's kind of the standard for a hop stand. And then we're, I'm going to show you the dry hop edition. Amarillo again. We're going to have 60 grams dry hop. Now, this is cool feature. You can either put on day two that you're going to put these hops in. So this is really good. If you're doing a New England IPA, you can say on day two, I'm going to put 60 minutes in and then you can add another edition. On day six, you're going to put another 60 edition in or my preference is once it's finished fermenting, I like to go with two days of dry hopping. With the magic of television, I've added in all the hops. You, know. you can toggle here, hop summary. So this is really good if you if you're putting the recipe together before you actually buy the ingredients. So you can see here, you're going to need a good 90 grams of Amarillo, 60 Centennial, 30 Genic, etc. So that's a really cool feature. All you do is press that button. As you can see, we've got 10 grams bitter in. We've got some 10 minute edition. We've got hops down and we've got dry hops. Uh, if you look down here, the IBUs then, we've got 33. And in the book, we've got 30. So all you have to do, rather than trying to figure it all out yourself, you press that IBU button. You put a 30 in there, scale, and there you go, look, 8.1 grams, that's all you need. This is all going to obviously calculate based on the alpha acids that you've entered. So you have to make sure the alpha acids that you put in here are exactly as they are on the packet and not on the default software. So you have to tinker around with that. If you go up here to the vital statistics, you'll see ABV is in range, OG is just in range, the FG is slightly out, but I'm going to tinker with that. If you go down here, it's because I haven't put the yeast in yet. So we're going to go with US05 and final gravity. I'm going to change this to 1010 because that's usually where it ends up. So that would bring us to 4.6%. 4.6% within the range, within the range, within the range. EBC is a little low. It's not my recipe, so I'm going to leave it. IBUs is very low. Uh, and the relative bit bitterness is fine. Moving on then, uh, let's get a protoflock in there. Put one protoflock, 15 minutes. Let's add some yeast nutrients. Uh, as you can see, the default here is grams. You can change that in the profiles uh, when infantry. Uh, but all you need to do is tinker with a unit. I'm going to go with a teaspoon. Let's go with two teaspoons yeast nutrient and let's change that to 50, 10 minutes. I knew I'd forgotten something. Just editing the video and realized I completely skipped the mash. So it's really simple. You can press change and you can pick a, a, a default profile or you can create your own uh, here in profiles. So you just go profiles, mash, add profile. I've got here my grandfather mash. Go back to the recipe, go to edit. 
I've got a simple two-step mash. You can add as many steps as you <laughs> desire. <laughs> um, you can do a temperature infusion decoction. We're going to go nice and easy. 67 degrees. Um, it's as easy as changing it like that. 60 minute mash. We're going to do a mash out 75 degrees. I'm going to do that for 10 minutes. Fermentation profile. Let's stick with that. 20 degrees, 2 degree cold crash. Now there you go, we've created the recipe. Um, and if you go down here, you can see your mash water, your sparge water, total water and everything. If you press this toggle here, that'll show you the water additions. I'm going to do that in a separate video, so just stay tuned. What you would want to do next then is you save, obviously. It should automatically save, but if not, just double check if you like me. I always click that a couple of times just in case. Um, you could clone this recipe. You can export it, you can share it, you can print it, you can have a, have a look in read mode. There's a cool little feature here. Um, if you want to export there, export as a PDF, be it XML, you can do all that here with the toggle. If you want to print the recipe, it's as quick as that. You can print that out and use that for your notes. But what you need to do next is you press through. When you're really happy with it, you press save again. <laughs> Don't need to, but I just like doing that. You can press save. And then what you want to do here, brew day. Okay, so today is the 16th. We're going to be brewing this on the 18th. Uh, inventory, obviously I didn't have half of these ingredients, but if I did, all you do then is you tinker here with the to toggle buttons um, and that will change your inventory. And you can take some notes. On brew day, you can switch over to your app and there's a nice little timer here. Um, I'm going to leave the video there because I think I've gone too long, um, but you get the idea. Um, please go and check it out. Cheers.